For many people, reality television is a guilty pleasure. We love the premise of unscripted moments and drama that isn't manufactured. But sadly, that isn't always the case. Join us as we shatter the illusion that reality TV is actually realistic. But first, be sure to subscribe for the latest from the taco. Let's get started. Toddlers and Tiaras Considering the fact that little kids can be pretty funny and pageants are known for drama, you might be wondering what there is to fake on toddlers and tiaras. One former production assistant who chose to remain anonymous was happy to dish on a Reddit AMA about what it's like behind the scenes. She confessed that the confessionals are highly scripted. The kids seem bratty because you don't see the adult asking, do you think you're the prettiest girl in the pageant, before the kid starts talking. Anything that seems spontaneous was probably scripted, or the child was forced to repeat the moment multiple times to get it just right. When the show films a pageant, it stretches out to seven hours, which is a long time for little kids. That means that without manufactured scenes, the show would be 90% kids sitting around, snacking, drawing, and resting which doesn't exactly create tension. Of course, there are some contestants who are a bit out there, and that's no accident. Former employee Maxine Tennell says that TLC would purposely find the craziest families possible. If there was no actual pageant near them, they would hire her to throw one so that they could be featured on the show. If you've ever wondered why the audience looks empty at times, it's because TLC doesn't allow people besides families and close friends of the contestants to sit in the audience. The Bachelor Okay, we know the setup of The Bachelor isn't the most ideal way to find true love, but we still can't stop watching. Still, there are some over-the-top moments that have clearly been faked, which totally breaks the fantasy. Everyone knows that the most dramatic moment of any episode is the rose ceremony, so we hate that we busted the producers faking. Remember when Maddie J became too overcome to give out a rose, instead letting us down and leaving us on the edge of our seats until next week's episode? If you notice the footage of him putting the rose back on the table, you might see that the motion looks rather strange and unnatural. In fact, it looks exactly like someone simply took footage of Maddie J picking up a rose and played it backwards. Former contestant Leslie Hughes once competed for roses from Sean Lowe, and she spilled some behind-the-scenes secrets. Alcohol flows freely backstage, and producers are quick to encourage girls to drink no matter the time of day in order to lower their inhibitions. She also noted that many of the times you see someone crying, it's just because they feel isolated, since contestants aren't allowed to contact the outside world at all. They're stuck in a house with a bunch of strangers, and that can be understood understandably stressful. The Bachelorette Behind the scenes of The Bachelorette is a lot raunchier than the show would have you believe. Sure, love is all well and good, but apparently there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Usually, torrid hookups make for good television, but not when you're maintaining the illusion that a contestant is looking for love. Caitlin Bristow confessed that she had hooked up with potential suitor Nick Vile only seven episodes into the show. And have you ever wondered why the suitor's home looks so nice? There's always the part when the bachelorette visits her suitor's hometowns, but much of that is fake. When Rachel Lindsay visited various houses, she admits that most of them were rented by the bachelorette. The show cites noise and privacy reasons for the deception and rents homes for the day in order to get the shots that they need. You can tell when houses look too pristine and sparsely decorated. And what are the odds that Brian Avasilo and Peter Cross would have had the same vases in both their homes? Other former contestants claim that producers would suggest various activities for them to engage in, or conversations they'd like to see happen on screen. Big Brother when it comes to reality shows, many people believe that at least we can take comfort that Big Brother is real. That is, until some shocking video was aired one evening. Viewers heard Big Brother saying goodnight to the contestants, followed by people going to bed and the lights going off. But moments later, the lights came back on and everyone got up. Ricky Norwood congratulated everyone on a great take and Big Brother once more spoke suggesting that everyone go to bed soon since they would have to get up early the next day. Viewers were shocked by this blatant fakery. Big Brother alumni Andy West and Nikki Graham spoke out against the allegations, claiming that the show is real and unscripted, but fans who stayed up to watch the live stream were not convinced. Former contestants have also called out castmates for doing things just for the sake of cameras. On Celebrity Big Brother, Kim Woodburn was known for her explosive outbursts. She even brought her attitude on This Morning, but may have overplayed her hand. According to host Holly Willoughby, the second the camera stopped rolling, the tantrums and rants completely stopped. This led to speculation that perhaps Woodburn was just playing things up for the cameras on Celebrity Big Brother as well. 
Man vs. Wild there is no denying that Bear Grylls has done things that most of us could only ever dream of. This includes, but is not limited to, climbing Mount Everest, crossing the North Atlantic Ocean on an inflatable boat, and setting the Guinness World Record for longest continuous indoor freefall. But we are talking about his show, Man vs. Wild, and it seems that the man in this scenario has quite a bit of help. Consult to the show, Mark Wainert called people who believe that the show is 100% real a little bit naive. At the beginning of each show, Grills claims he only has a few items, and his camera crew will not help him in any way. When filming in the Sierra Nevada mountains, we saw Grills biting the head off of a snake, but we didn't see him spending his nights at the Pines Resort at Bass Lake. This place is a luxurious hotel with a spa and not what we would call wild. In another episode, Grills claimed to be on a deserted island, but was actually in Hawaii, where he spent nights at a local motel. If you thought he really built a raft to sail to safety, the raft was actually constructed by builders. They then disassembled the raft so Grills could rebuild it in front of the camera. The Apprentice Although he's moved on to bigger and better things, like being the President of the United States, at one time Donald Trump had his own reality show. The Apprentice seemed to work out well for Omarosa, but what about everyone else? The premise was that people would compete in business-related competitions and win a contract to manage one of Trump's businesses. Except for the fact that it didn't happen, and this isn't just bitter contestants or conjecture. Trump himself called the grand prize Truthful Hyperbole. He claimed that it's a bit much to ask someone to take charge of a multi-million dollar business when they don't have that kind of experience. Well, we agree with that, but it's kind of the whole premise of the show. So what happens to the winners? Kelly Perdue and Bill Rancic, who won the first two seasons, were given the titles of owner's representative. What does that mean? According to them, their job was basically to drum up excitement for Donald Trump and for The Apprentice. Basically, contestants just become walking, talking advertisements for a show where people can compete to also be walking, talking advertisements. American Pickers We love treasure hunting as much as the next person, and it's fun to imagine that you might have a valuable treasure in with all your household junk. American Pickers is a simple show that isn't known for drama, so it seems ridiculous that it would be faked, but here we are. According to people who have appeared on the show, the crew would typically agree on a price with them before the shooting. Then once cameras were rolling, Frank and Mike would then start hassling them to lower their price and downplay the value of their items. Sure, they're trying to make a profit, but this goes drastically against their personalities as represented on the show. Also, many former crew members claim that even the items are planted. It makes sense from a practical standpoint, but it kind of ruins the fantasy about finding the treasure in an unusual place. And the idea of Mike and Frank driving around looking for places to review is fine, but that isn't how it happens. They fly around the country and just film scenes depicting them driving, or simply drive short distances. Mike, Frank, and Danielle all seem very enthusiastic about picking, but that's not the case. Off-camera, Danielle is a burlesque star who owns her own boutique, but Frank didn't start picking until the show. Only Mike has a true passion for being an American picker. House Hunters if you've ever been skeptical of the people who appear on House Hunters, you are right to have doubt. The premise of the show is simple. A couple or family is looking for a house, so they check out three potential homes and they buy one. Sounds pretty straightforward, but the entire thing is completely fake. For starters, you can't be on the show unless you already own a home. That's right, they don't start filming until you've already closed on a house. That means when you see people supposedly struggle to balance their wants and budgets, it's all an act. Episodes are essentially filmed backwards and often the homes they look at aren't even for sale. People who have been on the show claim that they have pretended to view their friends' homes, which were definitely not for sale. But it's not like they are actually looking to buy. HGTV even admitted it in a statement and claimed that they do it in order to make good television. They rationalize it by insisting that home buying is so emotional that it's almost like their reactions to seeing other houses is authentic. They believe that it's for fun for audiences to play along as they pretend to buy houses, knowing they've already chosen and closed on a house. America's Got Talent America's Got Talent does showcase some truly talented individuals, but that doesn't mean that everything is real behind the scenes. Even the audience's reactions are controlled by producers behind the scenes. They'll tell them when to clap, laugh, and boo at various acts. They even make sure to include a handful of plants during each taping to lead the way and make sure everyone plays along with their instructions. 
For example, if the producers want everyone to make the X signal to help the judges to eliminate someone, they'll have their plants do it to lead the way. This means that the producers are controlling who gets through the audition process behind the scenes, essentially pre-screening all contestants. And this isn't just about making sure that only the best acts go through. One circus troupe appeared on the show only to be booed off stage under the instruction of producers. Ironically, the same people that begged the troupe to be on the show in the first place. The performers declined for years before finally being wooed onto the show. So the people behind America's Got Talent spent years courting these people just so they could be mocked and booed on stage. Kitchen Nightmares we already know that over 60% of the restaurants featured on Kitchen Nightmares are now closed, but for fans, this isn't the fault of Gordon Ramsay or the show. Surely, it's the personal failings of the owners or the fact that the restaurants are so far in debt by the time Gordon arrives. That's fair, but ignores the fact that there is so much about the show that isn't real. When you see staff members that can't seem to stop fighting, it's probably because producers put them up to it. Leslie Bazzini from the episode with Bazzini's Restaurant claims that she was often asked very leading questions such as, if this fails, how can you stay with your husband? Finn McCool's was another restaurant featured on the show and the staff claims that Ramsay isn't how he appears on television, but in a good way. They described him as warm, friendly, and claimed that he was an excellent teacher. Most episodes feature crowded and disastrous dinner services and that's because producers overbook the restaurants by as many as 100 guests. Even the most well-put-together restaurant would struggle in that situation, let alone one that is already floundering. Which of these scripted moments do you find the most egregious? Tell us what you think in the comments. And be sure to subscribe for more videos from The Taco. See you next time!